Welcome to Life Devotions. Thank you for joining me today. I don't deserve this, is the title of this devotion. <laughs> I know we live within a mindset within the West where people live in a thinking about what they deserve. And I do understand where that comes from, and that is another conversation. I do understand that, so I'm not meaning to be judgmental or harsh about it, but <laughs> it is actually when you spend time with people who have nothing, you know, or who have ill health and yet live so sweetly and so well, and maybe their character has some serious amazing qualities to it and you don't have their illness and you don't have their symptoms and you don't have their challenges you, you kind of go well I sure don't deserve this well-being when I look at them you see we, we could sometimes forget forget that really who we are and what we have is all it's all God's goodness and kindness. David said in Psalm 16 in the New English translation, all that I am, Lord, and all that I have comes from you. For you give me all that I need. My future is in your hand. I'm yours, Lord. All that I am and all that I have is yours, Lord. And here in Psalm 24, verse 1, David says, the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. It all belongs to God. <laughs> it's amazing how we could look at life and forget this. I think it is actually good to remember that what we are and what we have is all a gift of God's grace. It's all a gift of God's blessing. I think it's good to stop in all the busyness of this life and to remember the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I think it's good to stop. Stop, don't be in such a rush in life that you pass it by and, and forgot to appreciate it. Forgot to appreciate it. Be thankful, grateful. And to have this nature about you that makes everybody feel, wow, you give a feeling of value. You give a feeling of significance. You give a feeling of worth. I forget that. I often feel worthless and I often feel life is worthless and I often feel it's not worth living for and I'm in a rush going nowhere. I really do, you know, I, and I know I talk about this because it's so valuable to me, but my relationship with the Lord is valuable. And I know I want, I want to wake up to how phenomenally valuable it is. I only fathom so much, but there's so much more to fathom of the height, the depth, the breadth, and the length of the love of my Savior, Jesus. I want to grow in the knowledge of His love. I want to know His love more. I want to live in the value of what I have, in the gratefulness of what I have, so I could give it away better. I have that in my marriage. I, I, I look at Virginia and I'm amazed how amazing she is. Joshua and Sarah and their children, Zachary and Sean and their children and J Jamie and Mariah, you know, I, that's my little bitty family. And I want to be grateful with Life Church. God forbid that I would ever compare this congregation, this church, this building, whatever, to anybody else. No, I'm grateful with what the Lord's given me. I'm grateful having this time with you in these devotions. I really am. I really feel God's grace on the devotions because I feel this is something the Lord's giving us. David took time to come before the Lord. And in 1 Chronicles chapter 29, he comes before the Lord and he says in verse 10, Therefore David blessed the Lord before all the assembly 
And David said, blessed are you. He's praying in front of the whole congregation. Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power and the glory, the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. All that is in heaven and earth is yours. David had really come to this realization that all belong to God. Yours is the earth and the fullness. In Psalm 73, he says, I'm continually with you. You hold me by my right hands. Psalm 73, 23. You guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me in glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there's none upon the earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. It is good for me to draw near to God. I've put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all your works. He said, yours is the victory and majesty. All that is in heaven and is and earth is yours. Who do I have in heaven but you, Lord? And there's none on earth I desire but you, Lord. You are the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. In you I'm complete, lacking nothing, wanting nothing. You make me stable in your sufficiency and satisfied. Satisfy me with your goodness and mercy that follow me all the days of my life. Yours is the kingdom, Lord. All that's in heaven and earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. Now, therefore, our God, we thank you. We praise your glorious name. But who am I? And who are my people that we should be able to offer so willingly as this for all things come from you and of your own we have given. Do you see this? Read it, First Chronicles 29, a phenomenal chapter. I only went as far as verse 10 through verse 14. You see, God wants you to realize, I don't deserve this. I don't deserve it. I don't deserve to have Virginia and have my children and, and their marriages and, and their children and on and on. I don't deserve any of it, folks. I don't deserve to be the pastor of this church. I don't deserve to come to you by the Holy Spirit and share these devotions with you. I don't deserve anything. I don't deserve to be here. I don't deserve having heaven as my home and Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior, living in my heart by the Holy Spirit, revealing His holy, heavenly life, His sinless life in me, empowering me to live as He lives and to be a witness to the only true living God by the life He gives me day and night. I don't deserve any of it. I don't deserve anything. And that's why I'm thankful and I want to be more thankful. I want to remember to be grateful. God forbid that I would complain or have a negative attitude while well, you don't and you never and all that. I don't want to know that mindset. And when I've stumbled in that way, it's always been detrimental to me. You always cut off your own blessings when you complain about life. But when you just keep meditating on the mercies, on the goodness, on the love of your Father, on His faithful truth and His faithful goodness to you, you keep meditating on all that you have that He's blessed you with. Wow, I have seen people, I will mem never remember, never forget, brother and sister Westerdorp. This was a couple who I had the privilege to serve with, Virginia and I, when we were pastors in the Netherlands. I was a pastor there from 1982 to 1986. And uh, I, I worked before that in the ministry, but I started as the, as the pastor. My father had started that church nine years before, and then I started to come in alongside him, and he made me the senior pastor. 
I think it was 1982. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Beginning of 1982 or maybe the end of 1981, I became the pastor there. I was young. And uh, well, I was passed, of course, alongside my father because he, only because of him was I able to, to do that. You know, anyway, that's a story in itself. But you know, there was this couple in the church, brother and sister Westerdorf. That's the only way I, I know their names. And sister Westerdorf had a bone um, issue that her bones became soft, so soft that they could not uphold her body. So she had to wear a whole body corset in, that would support what the bones were supposed to do to hold her body up. And that caused incredible pain and, and, and challenges in her physically. Never once did that precious soul complain or was not there. She was in church every service we had. We had, I think, four services a week. She was there every service. And she would stand at the door with her husband to greet the people. One time, right after I finished preaching on the midweek service, I stepped off the podium. This man was walking towards me. I didn't know him. So I stretched out my hand as he came right up to me to shake his hand. I thought he wanted to come and greet me. And instead of that, he hit me. Instead of shaking my hand, he hit me right on my temple, I think, or on my cheek. I can't remember where he hit me, but in my face. And he hit me so hard that he knocked me cold. He knocked me out. I became unconscious. Who was the fir first person that jumped on top of him to stop him from attacking me? Brother Westendorf. He was an old man already, and Sister Westendorf. They were quite old. They were in their upper 70s, uh, probably early 80s. <laughs> And Brother Westendorp jumped on him to save me and stop him and, and, and stopped him from hitting me. I, I have no idea today who that was because I was out cold. And when I finally woke up, he was gone, you know. And so I don't know who it was or why he did it. And God bless him. I, I'm not upset with him at all. I forgive him gladly. And, you know, but I just remember Brother and Sister Westendorp how grateful and sweet and loving they were and expressed that life of Jesus Christ. I tell you, when, when you say, I don't deserve it, you look at your hands and they're working. Wow, look at that, isn't that amazing? And I look at other people who have problems in their hands and say, Lord, I don't deserve this, I'm so grateful. You, the, the, I hope you're getting the point of this devotion. Be grateful, be thankful, be happy, be positive, be optimistic, and share that kind of spirit of optimism and gratefulness, no matter what challenges you face with those around you. There's always a reason you can give thanks to the Lord. There's always a reason you can be grateful. There's always a reason while you have breath that you can bless His name, amen? Have a good day.